in this video, I'll be proving the fact that I was talking about last time, which is the universality of the comma category. So, what do I mean by that? Well, here is a diagram that mimics the comma category diagram. You have two projections down to categories, you have functors going into the category, you have a third projection going down to the arrows of the category, and you have the domain, codomain going into the category there, and we say that this commutes. Note that this x does not have to be the comma category, even though everything in this diagram says that it probably looks like the comma category. And this is going to be a formal statement of what it means to look like the comma category. So right here, we can have the comma category f down g. And we can have the two projections. One of the projections bring you down to a. The other projection brings you down to b. And you have the third projection goes around and its name is r. And it brings you down to the arrows. And it also makes this bottom portion of the diagram commute except it's with the comma category. Now, what exactly are we trying to prove here? The statement of the theorem is that you, given any diagram that looks like the one with x in it, so given any one of those diagrams, ignoring the comma category one, that commutes, you can construct a unique arrow L right there that makes this all commute. All right, how do we go about proving that? That given any one of these triangular diagrams here, the small triangular diagram with X, we can construct an L so that this commutes. Well, let's go ahead and see what it means to commute first. All right, well, we'll have L and then we'll have P. So that is PL. And this takes you from x to a. And so that has to be equal to p prime. And then we'll also have l and then q, which is q l, which then has to be equal to q prime right there. And then we'll also have l and then r, so r composed l. And that has to be equal to, because this takes you from x around to the arrows of the category, it has to be equal to r prime. That's what it means for this diagram to commute. So if we can prove these three facts, that's all we need to prove the theorem. All right, how do we do that? Well, it's actually given by these results right here. The functor that you generate is literally guaranteed and restricted to be unique by these three conditions. Very easily seen to be. Because L needs to take in an object of X and output a triple. What should the triple be? Well, look at these rules. The first projection, if you remember, of a triple A, F, B, which I'm now writing a little bit different, is a. Now what does this say? Well this says that p of l of some element is equal to, well, by this rule, p prime of x. If you can see the parallel, you can see the projection brings you to the first coordinate. Right here, this tells me that the first coordinate of l of x is p prime of x. So that is the only possible way to create the first coordinate. Same thing with the middle coordinate, with r. So r of a, f, b is f. And by this rule, we have r of l of x is equal to, right there, r prime of x. And so similarly, we just do r prime of x for the middle coordinate because r sends you to the middle coordinate, r sends l of x to r prime of x, therefore the middle element of l of x is r prime of x. And this is the only 
possible way we can have this because it's guaranteed by this condition right here. And then same thing with the third coordinate, it would have to be Q prime of X. Now what about acting on arrows? So how would I do L of F? So there will be two coordinates, two different arrows. We just have to fill in what each of those arrows are. Same exact logic. The projection of an arrow, a projection of an arrow coming from the comma category is just the first coordinate of that pair of arrows. Well, looking at this, we know that P of L of an arrow must then be equal to P prime of that arrow. And so I think you can see where this is going. That means the first coordinate of the pair must be P prime of F. And then same exact region with the follow-up arrow. So it would be Q prime of F. And that's literally all you need to prove uniqueness. This is it acting on objects. This is it acting on arrows. That is uniqueness. The only thing I really have to prove is that it commutes with, is that these arrows commute with R because R is not involved here. There's no uniqueness and we didn't base it off of this property. So how do I know that R of L of F is equal to R prime of F? Let's first figure out what R of L of F is. So R L of F is the pair P prime of F and then Q prime of F. All right, then R of anything is just the functor F applied to the first coordinate, P prime of F, and then G applied to the second compo uh, component, Q prime of F. So this is the pair that we're left with. How do I know that this is equal to R prime of F? I'll use the commutivity of the original diagram to prove this. So from the commutivity of this original diagram, I know that if I do R prime and then I do domain, that has to be the same as doing P prime and then F. So what I get out of this is that the domain composed with R prime, so the domain of R prime has to be equal to F P prime. And then I also get that the codomain of R prime, so I do R prime and then I do the codomain there, has to be the same as Q prime and then G, which is Q prime and then G. What does this tell us? Well, something you should know about the domain and codomain functors is that it will send it to the first and or second coordinates. So on the arrows, it'll send you to the domain will send you to the first coordinate, codomain will send you to the second coordinate of the arrow. All right. So that means that R prime, by the fact that these domain and codomain sends you to each coordinate of F has to be equal to the pair F P prime of F and G Q prime of F. And as you can see, these are equal to each other. And so by the fact that this triangle with X commutes, you get it that it has this universal property. And I'll go into what universal properties are in a later video, but probably not too later. All right, so that was just so that you don't think I'm lazy and I don't know how to do the problem questions in McLean. Shut up. Anyway, if you really want to prove prove that this is unique, you'd start with any functor that would make this commute and then go backwards, but I pretty much just showed you that there's no way of getting around this and that's what ends up happening if you do that. So uh, anyway, uh, that's it. Uh, thank you very much.